Proverbs chapter 16. We continue our study in the book of Proverbs where Solomon shares with us the wisdom of heaven. The Holy Spirit put on the heart of what's referred to as one of the wisest men who ever lived truth for you and for me to take and to apply to our life today. And he starts off this chapter with an incredible truth. To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. You and I are going to plan. For a man plans his ways, but the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. You and I are going to have ideas. You and I are going to have strategy for our future. You and I are going to have vision and dreams for our future. But the reality is this, the answer for our future comes from God. He's going to give us dreams. He's going to give us desires. He's going to give us giftings. He's going to give us skills. And there's going to be things where we're going to wonder and we're going to weigh. We're going to put in the balance. Should I do this or should I do that? The reality is the answer, the proper answer, it comes from God. So you're going to find yourself in situations just as I do where you're going to have to make a choice. Do I go this way or do I go that way? Sometimes staying still is not an option. You know, it's easy to... You know, people say, well, be still and and know that he is God, and I'm just going to stay still and wait on God. And and that's great. There's seasons for that, but there's sometimes where you have to make a choice. You literally don't have a choice. Not making a choice is making a choice. Do I do this or not? Do I take this job or not? Do I marry this person or not? Do I do whatever? There's going to be moments where you have to make a choice. And it's interesting. It says that the proper answer comes from God the Lord. There's what I think, and then there's what God knows. And my hope is that what I think would come in alignment with what God knows. Jesus is in the garden, and he's talking to the Father, and he's like, yo, if there's any other way, I'd love to talk it out. But nevertheless, no matter what I think, not my will, but your will be done. This picture of Jesus saying, hey, I've got thoughts, I've got plans, I've got feelings, and they're real, and God's okay with that. God can handle your feelings. But God, I'm submitted to your will. And if we bring things before the Lord as our first option, not our last resort, prayer is not a last resort, it's our first option. We have the opportunity to hear from God, and God will confirm things, or he won't give you a peace about things. And I believe that if we speak to God, God will speak to us, as the word says. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but the motives are weighed by the Lord. You always are going to think that your intentions are good. You're, you and I, we're always going to think that our ways are pure because they seem pure to us. But the reality, the Bible says, is that our real intentions, our real motives, God knows. And everything's opened up before him. So we always need to be aware of our heart, asking God, God, is there anything in me that's not in alignment with your word? Is there anything in me that's not healthy, that's not clean? Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. When you do things as unto the Lord, when you do things for the Lord, you will be established. You will be planted. It says in Proverbs, the righteous will not be uprooted. It says that the righteous will flourish. God wants us to flourish, and how do we do that? By abiding in him. Jesus talked about it. Abide in me and you will bring forth much fruit. For the Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked for a day of disaster. People ask, well, why does God allow good things to happen to bad people? Why does God allow this to happen? Listen, here's your answer right here. The Lord works out everything to its proper end. He's a just judge. Just because you think something should be done today, right now, and this is how you would do it, doesn't mean that that's how God sees it. And trust me, he will not let the wicked go unpunished. He says it. He says there is a day of disaster. But he's a God of mercy and grace. And we need to be thankful for that because there's mercy and grace for us as well. But God's got it. Ephesians talks about how he works all things together for the counsel of his own will. God knows his plan. From the beginning to the end, he knows what he's going to do. God doesn't need, respectfully, counsel from me or you. He's got it. Verse 5, the Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies 
to make peace with them. When your ways please the Lord, even your enemies will be at peace with you. God has a way of making people who oppose us be at peace with us. Why? Because when our ways honor him, he goes before us. Verse 8. Better little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, human plans their course, but the Lord established their steps. The steps of the righteous are ordered by God. May God order your steps and mine. The lips of a king speak as an oracle, and his mouth does not betray justice. For honest scales and balances belong to the Lord. Here we go. He's bringing this up again multiple times throughout Proverbs. All the weights in the bag are of his making. God wants things to be honest, and God wants things to be balanced. God detests dishonest scales. For kings detest, verse 12, wrongdoing. For a throne is established through righteousness. Let's look at this the next four chapters talk about, uh, excuse me, the next three, four verses talk about kings. Let's look at this through the lens of like a boss or an authority in our life. Let's, let's say your boss detests wrongdoing for a throne is established through righteousness. We don't need to do the wrong thing. We need to do the right thing. Our boss, verse 13, or our king takes pleasure in honest lips. They value the one who speaks what is true. Your manager, your oversight, your leader, they want you to tell the truth. They don't like it when we lie. A king's wrath or a boss's wrath is a messenger of death, but the wise will appease it. Don't make your boss mad. Be wise. Learn how to relate to your oversight. When a king's face brightens, when your boss's face smiles, it means life. And his favor is like a rain cloud in the spring. When you make your boss happy, there's going to be favor on your life. Verse 16, how much better to get wisdom than gold to get insight rather than silver. For the highway of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. For pride goes before destruction. You've heard this. This is a famous proverb. And a haughty spirit before a fall. When we have pride, we better check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Some might say we're cruising for a bruise and there's going to be pain in our future. Lord, would you ruthlessly eliminate pride from our life? Better be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. For whoever gives heed to instruction prospers and blesses the one who trusts in the Lord. For the wise in heart are called discerning, and the gracious words promote instruction. For prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. And the hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent, and their lips promote instruction. May we walk in wisdom. May we speak in wisdom. May we take actions that are in alignment with wisdom. Gracious words are a honeycomb. Gracious words are sweet. They're sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Just as words can hurt us, words can also bless us. There's a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. He said this proverb multiple times. Catch it. When he repeats himself, when God repeats himself multiple, multiple, multiple times, not just once, not just twice, multiple, multiple times, we need to listen. It looks good, but the end is bad. The appetite of laborers works for them. Their hunger drives them on. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips is like a scorching fire. A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. So good, 28. A gossip separates close friends. What destroys friendships? Gossip. Gossip. One, don't engage in it. We know that we shouldn't engage in gossip, but two, I would argue or contend or whatever. Don't even listen to it. Tell them to stop. What, what stops contention? What stops quarrels when no one will listen to gossip? Just ignore them. Tell them, hey man, I, I can't talk to you if you're going to keep gossiping. I can't keep listening to this. You don't have to engage in every every conversation or in everything that everyone wants to, especially if it's foolish and it's going to create division and hostility. A violent person entices their neighbor and leads them down a path that is not good. Whoever winks with their eye is plotting perversity. Whoever pursues, excuse me, whoever purses their lips is bent on evil. Such a unique word, Solomon. Thank you. Gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained in the way of righteousness. As we grow older and our hair grays, it shows that we've lived life and we have experience. Better a patient person than a warrior. We're going to come back to this one and close with it. One with self-control than one who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Okay, better a patient person than a warrior. 
Sometimes we think that we have to go into battle. Sometimes we think that we have to go take it. Sometimes we think that we have to go seize it. But it says one with self-control is better than one who takes a city. Sometimes knowing what not to do, not to say, not to engage in, not to jump into is just as good or better than being strong. And sometimes we think because we're gifted or because we're strong or because we can doesn't mean that we should. Because sometimes there's things in our life that we do that it's the New Testament principle is this. It might be lawful, but it's not beneficial. Did you need to take the city? Why did, why did you take the city? Why did you suffer loss to take the city? Why, why did you lose soldiers in battle? Now you, gotta, now you gotta take care of the city. Do you even want the city? Well, I don't know, I just took the city. Why? Better, a patient person. Use patience. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit, self-control, patience. We're we're talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You want wisdom? Ask God for it. He'll give it. Be blessed today.